I would like to introduce our uh, first speaker, speaker today. It's uh, Sara Yaksha. Uh, she is a software engineer at uh, LearnX. I, uh, uh, she comes from uh, the cognitive science and the economics background. Uh, she's uh, more likely to be interested in uh, how, the, how to use programming to find out the answers to the social science questions, data analysis and automation. And uh, she's also interested in how people and technology relate to each other. So please uh, give a warm welcome to Sarah, and she is going to speak about the regex and how it's magical. Okay, hello everybody. So how many of you have hangover from yesterday? Oh, great, we actually have people that took advantage of all the time. Okay, then my job is gonna be easier because not many, uh, rest of the people, I guess, actually went to sleep and were like normal people. Today I'm gonna talk about the regular expressions and why I found it uh, magical and why I found it really useful. So let me first start with the story that was half of the motivation for why I decided to have this speech. So when I started my first job, I was starting at a company that advertised themselves as we have all the things AI, everything is automated, artificial intelligence happens. So I started my work and at one point I had to work on the system, one of the system of that supposed AI and that's how it looked like. We were, one of the system was trying to get the data from the invoices and how it looks like was you put the PDF in, you do the uh, character recognition, you put them through the Python library and you get a JSON. And what I had to write was basically regu uh, regular expressions for how to get things from text that we were actually interested in. And I found it really interesting that a technology that existed like for decades and wouldn't really imagine it to be hyped, uh, hyped as, you know, an AI uh, as the being on the frontier of the technology was actually used for that. So, what are actually regular expressions? Regular expressions are basically just a sequence of characters that you can use to find any kind of patterns in texture data. So let me go with the example. So we are in Bratislava. Let's say I want to see how, uh, which parts of the last thousand years Bratislava actually was doing something and wasn't just existing. And what you can do is take a text from the Wikipedia try to find any four digits sequence, and what you get is sort of this. The 5,000 uh, value is because Wikipedia actually mentions Bratislava existed 5,000 years before Christ. So if we ignore that one, you can see the recency bias, you can see that it was active in the, around the 1800s, and that there was, uh, a bit of a peak around uh, 100. And if you are aware of the European history, you can sort of get a sense of when Bratislava was actually active. Um, okay, so how are the regular expressions actually then made? Uh, regular expressions are basically made by mixing a literal characters, which is this is exactly how I want the string to look like. And special characters, which is like the rest of the string, I don't know how it looks like, but I'm assuming it's in the pattern. The pattern can also be any characters, no matter how many length it is. And by putting it all together, you can create the regular expressions that help you find what you're looking for. So, if we go to back to the Bratislava example, all I was searching for was telling I want four digits and give me a, any value that I actually want. 
Okay. So when we talk about you know uh, literal character and special characters, you can define the special characters in many ways. You can say a digit, you can say a space, you can say an alphanumeric character, any character, you can put ranges and so on. And you can also, for example, say, okay, how many times do I want that type of characters to repeat? Do I don't want certain type of characters? That can also be very useful. Do I want a certain group of characters or uh, how exactly do I want the different groupings to happen? So let's put it on a case that I use at work. I had to take care of hundreds of integrations that we do for our platform and generally our errors are always basically formatted in this way. That's how I know something went wrong. So uh, the, uh, the upper level cases are for the values that change because it's not always the same customer, not always the same service, definitely not always the same error. And there are some things that are always the same. So what I do is I basically have like the so I have like the basic one, and then I basically replace with literal values any values that I know that I want. So if I want things just for one region, I would replace it with literal values because in a regex, one of the important rules is you want them to find, to reject the non-valid uh, strings as, uh, as quickly as possible because that makes it a bit faster. Um, and so, um, and I can then get, uh, and by putting it in the, how does the, how are these parameters called? Uh, parentheses called, normal parentheses? Maybe, yeah. Okay, uh, you can actually then get the values that uh, you can use to do it, uh, to analyze different kind of data with that. So, and there, Python also has a really uh, good thing that allows you to do reg access through multiple lines or to ignore the cases or to, um, or, and so on. So let me go through a couple of interesting examples. Who here has been for the my name is valid speech? It was a good speech, right? Uh, and the point of don't check the uh, names, I'll skip, because I'm pretty sure Miroslav has made that speech hell of a lot better. But my name is usually not valid um, for reasons. I don't care if the packages doesn't know how to print it. I find it really annoying when I can enter it in the form and the form tells me my name is not valid. I'm pretty sure I know what my name is. <laughs> I mean, you feel really uh, stupid. So here is probably one of the examples of where it happens. Uh, isn't it nice how Python 3 has like uh, UTF-8 Unicode support by default? Because if I tell Python, find me all the characters in my name, it will actually find me my whole name. If I ask JavaScript to find it, it will not find me all the letters in my last name. To actually get the same thing in Python, you would actually have to say, do, me, uh, do just the ASCII, uh, ASCII regex and ignore all the Unicode values. So I really, really like that Python has like multi-language support basically built in without actually have to worry about it. So another example, I study Japanese and uh, I'm, uh, Okay, I study multiple languages, but Japanese is the only one that has a different writing system. So in order, and that means that I can just uh, open a book and start reading it, because you know, there are a lot of different character, uh, characters that you have to learn. So what I do is I analyze uh, series. But usually when you try to analyze series for a new characters, you get subtitles. 
and not scripts, because subtitles tend to be more useful for people actually watching the television. And I get it in this form. So what can I do? I can first remove all the lines that says uh, this is uh, uh, this, uh, the subtitles are basically made. This is the number of subtitles. These are the timestamps, and these are the lines. So what I basically do: remove the ones that tell me this is that line in the subtitles. You know the ordinal numbers. Remove the timestamps. Remove the different readings that appear or onomatopoeia. So basically, um, Japanese use uh, he knocked on the door or somebody screamed or all of that. They use it in the subtitles and they always enclose it in their Japanese version of the normal parenthesis, which is different than ours. And then you usually have to remove some weird uh, unicorn characters that just get mixed in because whoever was uploading it apparently didn't know, uh, save it in the different encoding. And you get normal lines that you can analyze with a couple lines of code. The flags that I mentioned here are really useful here because sometimes the, li uh, the lines, because uh, then I can match things without actually splitting it into lines. And I can just do the entire string matching. And also sometimes the sounds can uh, be like multiple lines of description of what's happening. Or I can decide which series I'm gonna watch by how complicated the vocabulary is, okay? The Japanese kanjis are a really rough estimate, but it's still a pretty good estimate. So what I can do is tell Regex, please just remove everything in the block from one point to an, uh, remove everything that's not in the block from one point to another, because this is the block that contains most of the uh, Japanese kanjis. And I get, uh, just the list of them that they, I can then analyze to see, you know, how many new unknown ones are in it or how many known ones are in it and so on. That, one, that series that I took here as an example is a pretty simple one. Some military ones can have a very high count for these things because they have too much specialized vocabulary. Let's take an example that probably more aware of you. In the spy room, there was a talk about uh, social media analyze. How many of you participated? Okay, just a couple. On the end, there was a question is, why do you remove the emojis? Because they seemed like pretty useful information. And she said, well, for you know sentiment analysis and that, you leave them in and so on. I'm a cognitive scientist, and at one point I was thinking of actually analyzing the difference between topics, doing the emojis. Uh, you can do that, not with the standard library, but with the regex library that the Python documentation actually recommends to use instead of a standard library. And you can just say, give me all the, uh, all the emojis in the string. Uh, why didn't I use that for the Japanese? Because that block of characters or the scripts are not actually yet supported, but emojis are, so better for your use case. Um, and when I say blocks or scripts, what I mean is all the characters have like Unicode codes and blocks basically say from this Unicode code to this Unicode code. I want, I named this block, I don't know, Cyrillic letters or, so, or something like that. And the scripts can basically take from each of the blocks what they're actually using. So, for example, Japanese would take the Japanese kanjis, they would take the hiragana and katakana, which are like their, um, their um, sort of read, uh, sort of, characters where, which you can read, that tells you how you pronounce things, or even their letters, which are different. 
By the way, Python does actually for digit match uh, Japanese digit, but uh, other, uh, other languages, not all of them do, which is also nice. Um, so I would also then like to go to the last example, the one that I was using in the recent month. But um, I, sub this, I sub have to write code in multiple languages at my job. You saw Python example, one of the microservices is written in JavaScript. And yeah, I see some people laughing, okay? Um, and uh, one of the things that my colleague decided is that we have written code too much in the promises inside of promises inside of callback sort of thing, so we need to rewrite it because that's undebuggable. And because I'm the most familiar with the code base, that job sort of fall on me. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's take an example. This is one of the things uh, on the end that I had to rewrite. So I had to rewrite this in the with a wait and a sync and so on. But in order to do that, I needed to see where this pattern is and I needed to actually get the information that I wanted, which was actually pretty good. Um, here I wanna say that even though I do use regexes a lot, I generally do check them on a visual one. I got this one from basically just testing the regex in the Web, uh, WebStorm code, uh, WebStorm program, but you can use any kind of online or things like that uh, code. So let me go to uh, another motivation to why I had this speech. When I say to people, usually that they like regexes, they give me this quote, which is some people when confronted with the problem think, I know I'll use a regular expression, and now I have two problems. And they use it as a all stop defense of not using it in any place and time. There is place where they can be misused. If you do have a parsing library, please use a parsing library. Unless it's a throwaway script, do not parse HTML with regex, which some people like to do. But for the textual data that doesn't have already good stable parsers, regex can be a very, very strong tool to actually use. And when you actually look on the internet for this quote, it seems to be that the person that says it didn't actually mean that you should never use regex. You should just be uh, careful about when to use it. So this is all. Thank you for listening, and I hope I didn't bore you enough and that you wake up a bit. Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, I'm looking at the Slido, and uh, we don't have any questions, so maybe in the audience, if someone wants to ask something, if not, then, yeah, well, thanks again yeah. for, for your talk, and we will see the next speaker in a couple of minutes. Oh, oh, oh okay, there is one question. Uh, ju ah, okay, just arrived. So, is there a way to remember regex patterns without searching on Google every time? <laughs> Technically, the answer is yes, but you're not gonna like it. Um, so who asked that? Okay. Um, basically the, okay, we can go into the learning theory. Um, if you take the learning theory, actually the worst way to remember something is to just read about it all the time and look it up and never try to remember it. So basically the answer to remember regexes is first try to write them and then look them on the internet. And re really soon you'll figure out you are remembering all the frequent patterns. So yeah, but uh, 
Other than that, um, I mean, you could always dedicate a learning, I don't know, flashcard session, but I don't think that's actually worth it. It's much better to remember what you actually use. So, yeah. Okay, okay we have more questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, uh, could you explain how the mm, slash p uh, something remaker works? Um, okay, check it out. Maybe I have, do I have it? Let me see, okay. So here are the list of all the properties the current regex library um, supports. What you basically do is, I hope you don't mean how it uh, works around. Uh, so all of these classifications basically refer to a group of characters that you can generate. For example, these are the blocks of different characters that you can use. Um, and you actually need to know what kind of problem you're solving and which of the blocks or scripts uh, is actually what you need. And the only thing you need to do is then put it inside of P. Sometimes you have to tell, uh, tell it if it's a block or a script, in which case you would write in front of them block um, equals whatever block or script equals whatever block. But I'll have to have more details to actually know what was meant with the question. So. Any details for coming? Okay. Not. Okay. Oh, we have more questions. So uh, what's your story behind uh, behind the uh, selling regex as an AI? Um, okay, first of all, that wasn't my decision. And I'm pretty sure the reasoning was that at the time, even though we had a Slovenia founder, we advertised them ourselves as the American startups. And apparently it's uh, in their culture to advertise something that you don't yet know how to do. And they, uh, they marketing said, well, AI is hot, so let's advertise as AI. And instead, we had two or three systems with regexes and manual work behind it, and no actual AI at the time. So yeah. Oh, OK, I think this is a good question. So how do you keep your regex documented and maintainable over a long time? Keep them short. If they're not throw away, keep them uh, short and actually have multiple regexes, like I had in the subtitle example, that each does one on uh, its own thing. Uh, otherwise, if I think it's too complicated, I'll leave a code. Uh, but so far, I the ones that we use in production are pretty short, so I didn't have problems with maintenance yet in that regard. The ones that I showed on the AI examples are the ones that we actually have in production, for example. Okay, so the next question is, could you share one of the web pages with regex validators? Um, okay, the, uh, one of the example is here. Um, I'm pretty sure if you Google regex online, you'll get any other. That's the one that I most frequently use, but I'm pretty sure all on the list are actually perfectly valid examples. Okay, so this is kind of opinionated question, but I will ask it. Uh, 
did it happen that the regex seemed to be a good way at, at the end it wasn't? Not yet in my experience. You'll probably have to ask somebody with a decade of experience behind it, which I don't yet have. So, so far, not yet. I'm sure I'm going to find a case like that eventually. No, there actually was a case. Um, we were um, parsing the CSV for Microsoft data and we used regexes to try to find licenses and that ended up being a really unmaintainable approach because it could be a lot easier done with simple string matching and not with regexes, which was easier to understand because they had a very formal status. You could just split by the plus sign and just then do exact matches. That was, in that case, regex was overkill. But yeah, the only example. Okay, so uh, Python libraries, uh, re versus regex, what are the main uh, three differences or the benefits? Um, I generally use the standard library for my projects. Uh, the only example is regex does have, a be uh, does have support for blocks and scripts, which as far as I'm aware, the standard library doesn't have any support for that. So if you're working with a different language data, that could actually be better. But uh, apparently they also say it's easily replaceable, just import regex as re re a, and it should work. So, don't know any of the other difference from the top of my head. Uh, can one parse HTML with regex? No, you have beautiful soup to th use that. Okay, and the last ones are more like suggestions, but uh, the person here is asking that he is using a uh, website uh, HTTP as regex101.com all the time. Uh, how to test uh, that uh, he is not getting uh, also something else? Is there, a, is there a way to generate the good test strings? I don't know a general way. I generally generate test cases that I know I wouldn't want to get or test cases that are a bit different than what I would expect and tested with that. But I don't know a general way. But yeah. So. Okay, the last one is more like suggestion, so I'm not going to read it. So thank you, Sarah, for your talk. And uh, uh, we will have the next speaker in a couple of minutes. Mikrobit je programovateľný milý počítač, ktorý ti dovolí prepojiť informatiku s kreativitou. Dá sa programovať veľmi jednoducho a ovládať tak, aby robil presne to, čo chceš. O pár minút sme zvládli rozsvietiť vlastný obrázok na displeji a o chvíľu sme už obrázky diálkovo prepínali druhým mikrobitom. Mikrobit má v sebe aj super vychytávky, ako sú tlačidlá, senzor pohybu, kompas a teplomé. K mikrobitu ale môžeš pripojiť množstvo ďalších vecí. Tu programujeme, aká animácia sa nám má ukázať na LED pásiku. Ja som na ňom naprogramovala dúhu. Teraz programujeme podľa nôd kohútika Jarabého. Najlepšie na mikrobite je, že si viem vytvoriť napríklad blikajúceho robota alebo gitaru, ktorú ovládam tak, že ňou zatraciem 
alebo futbalovú bránku, kde mi mikrobit počíta, koľko gólov som dala, alebo kúlové svietiace topánky a tisíc ďalších vecí, ktoré ešte len vymyslím. Mikrobit je hračka, ktorú schováš do dlane a vytvoríš z nej čokoľvek. Tak čo s ňou spravíš ty? Každých 60 sekúnd si 28 tisíc ľudí predplatí službu Netflix. Odošle sa 197 miliónov e-mailov, stiahne sa 414 tisíc aplikácií a ukradne niekoľko tisíc hesiel. Na internete sa toho deje veľa. A všetko najdôležitejšie sa dozviete na Živé SK. Živé SK. Technológie ľudskou rečou.